Thank you. And we're ahead of time, so does that mean I can speak longer? Okay, so I just want to report on a, um, a project that um, I was involved in last year on behalf of the School of Education on Principles of Professional Development, um, which was part of a larger, much larger AusAid program um, that had been running up until last year. In fact, this has begun again in, a, in another iteration. Uh, 387 million was the total project. The uh, basic education project was addressing quality of schools education and particularly focused on teachers and learning materials and better training and resourcing of schools. And the particular part of the project that I was involved in related to the development of school principles, which was seen to be a key element in terms of doing anything to bring about quality um, enhancement within schools in Indonesia. So, and, and one of the reasons is if we look at what the, the role of the, the school principal is in any context, actually, not just in, in Indonesia, the, the principal has a really important role of providing leadership and vision, strategies, and managing resources, uh, physical and human, and uh, implementing policy and also developing local policy, <clears throat> and acting as a community liaison person. So uh, all of these things hopefully to bring about optimum student learning. And um, so clearly the, the principal has a really important role to play in terms of schools and in terms of education development. So um, just some contextual things again, and I'll skip through these because we're all probably quite familiar with it. Lots of islands, lots of people, low, relatively low GDP per capita, uh, significant poverty levels uh, but declining, 33 provinces, 395 cities and regencies, which are important uh, because it's the districts or those regencies that implement <coughs> education. And um, school principals, until recently, their appointment was um, by, by direct, either by the provinces or the local um, agencies. But in 2010, um, the government introduced some regula uh, regulation, Regulation 28, which set the processes for appointment of principals and the training that they should undertake in order to be a principal and remain as a principal. Also, in 2007, another regulation was important because it specified the competencies uh, and the workplace standards that principals needed to work to. And it's an interesting regulation because they're expressed as competency standards. Um, since 2001, there's been a lot of deregulation going on down to the provinces. But the other really significant change that's happening in Indonesia, at, at least at a policy level, is a paradigm shift from a, a, trans, um, a transmission approach to education, which is exam and curriculum and content dominated, into a more learner-centred approach to education. I stress, though, that this is at the policy level, bringing those sorts of transformations about at the school level is, is difficult in any context, but it's certainly difficult in Indonesia. Um, so the project was, that I was involved in was focused on the principal's professional development and had three parts to it. One part was the identification of potential principals, a process for doing that, and training those potential principals through a, a preparation program, and then three levels of continuing professional development which principals have to undertake continuously while they're in their position. Um, and principals' positions are a limited tenure now under Regulation 28. The program in particular last year that, that I had involvement in as part of a team was the Level 1 program of the Continuing Professional Development. Just to pause here, we're talking about 250,000 principals that will undertake these programs and hopefully impact on kids now and in the future in Indonesia. Level 1 core program, I've listed the modules there that made up that program. Um, and they were selected on the basis of Regulation 13, which prescribed the competencies that principals need to have, but also the teams are, um, are thinking about the essential skills and how we could organise those. The approach to how we did this program um, picked up on a few things. It, it picked up on um, contemporary adult education principles, 
which was quite different to some of the approaches that have been done in Indonesia in the past, which have often been a delivery of content, lots of content in lecture formats with lots of material and then an examination at the end. But what we tried to put in place was a competency-based program picking up on Regulation 13, which was focused on the workplace and the jobs and the work that principals need to undertake and the actual training itself actually occurring mostly in the workplace. Not so much theory, lots of work and practice and the materials themselves were resource based um, so there was a great emphasis on the materials, focus on active learning and the materials to be flexible. The major structure of the programs incorporated a, an in-service component where people came in for a period of time and did some intensive training, a three months on the job training component and then a follow up uh, face to face component. The methodology that drove the program, but also drove the research that was part of the evaluation, picked up on qualitative and, qualita and quantitative elements. Uh, in the trial, there were 420 participants across six districts. The major instrument was a questionnaire, but there was also focus, various focus groups, um, use of various technology to capture evidence, uh, and also a lot of reflection by the team that was involved. Um, in terms of developing the program that made up the training materials, we used a workshop approach which allowed for people to be brought in as we needed them to do various things. But it also meant that different people were coming all the time. One of the reasons for this was to share the sort of experience and also provided a, a training opportunity for those people involved. But when you're trying to do two things at once, that is develop a course of materials and also train people in the the work of curriculum development, it's not actually as effective or as efficient as doing each of those things separately. There were two workshops for development. There was a workshop for training the trainers who were going to be involved in the trials. We trialled in six districts. We had a follow-up couple of workshops to review and edit the materials, and then we had a final evaluation workshop. So in the top picture, which is not very clear, it's a group of people, it's actually in Bali, uh, who were undertaking the trial. Um, they were in groups of six to eight, and the trainer would be the facilitator of the training. Essentially, they were working through the materials with the trainer um, being there to sort of guide and encourage. The bottom photograph is, is of one of the, tr um, the workshops that we used to, de to develop the materials. Okay, so what came out of this in terms of the trial? Um, seven modules over six, in six locations over three days, um, groups... Uh, we used. Um, the trainer, as I said, guided the, tr guided the, um, the learners through the materials. Um, we had a questionnaire. Uh, some of the criticisms that came out of that process, uh, were, there were a few. English terms was one. Um, but essentially, the consensus was the approach that we were using in terms of pedagogy and the uh, methods that were put in place and the materials went down very well and we, and we you know, it seemed to be quite successful. So just to finish up then, this um, approach seemed to work, but it was very difficult because the need to build a culture of understanding about new training methodologies, um, it was very difficult and there was some pushback on that. Um, and the, 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 while that particular part of the program finished last year, they've just started the second phase, which is working on the Level 2 and Level 3 uh, materials which is continuing into this year, again funded by Ozo. Thank you.